by Jeff Germino. Thank you very much. Pleasure to be here. And of course, we had to tape this show on the one good day that Minnesota has in its entire repertoire. But we are a weather-dominated state, no doubt about that. We can't get away from it. And uh, it dominates the, the local news a little too much more for me uh, than I can take. Anyway, I mean, it's just it's the longest part of our, you know, I just want to get to it. Get to it. Stop. Just, you know, just, you know, just get to it. And they never get to it. You know, it's like, you know, just quick, real fast. Just shock me one night. Come out there. Go, Good evening. Have no clue. Good night. Sports. <laughs> That would be refreshing, a little five-second forecast. But they don't do that. You know, I just went, no, not, no, not in the Twin Cities, not, no, not in Minnesota. We have to go into the backyard, <laughs> up to the rooftop. Oh, we got the weirdest people doing the weather here, you know, and it's just, yeah, come on. Don't show me those satellite photos. Can you tell if you have to wear a coat tomorrow from that satellite photo? <laughs> Who's going to challenge the authenticity of the satellite photo anyway? Hey, that's a bunch of crap. I was up there last night. That's last week's photo. How do we know that isn't last week's photo? And they're just yanking us every night on the TV weather. As you can tell by tonight's satellite photo, which uh, should look pretty familiar to you at this point. How do we know John Glenn didn't take that photo, huh? Get to the point, and you know, all of these, uh, and I just hate the whole idea that they, we're outside doing the weather. That's a new concept, apparently, in Minnesota weather. Go outside, see if some crap hits you in the face. <laughs> we actually have a guy, I'm embarrassed. People coming from out of town see our weather guy, Sven, in the backyard. That guy, Sven. <laughs> Is that the best we can do? <laughs> You've seen him? He's, he's like that big. He's like one of the Keebler elves. <laughs> I'm Sven. <laughs> I'm gonna do the weather. Oh my God, yeah. It just really gets to the point. And they gotta tell you stuff you don't need, barometric pressure, dew point. Every night we hear that one, dew point, dew point, yeah, dew point. I, you know, I'm not a farmer. I got an acre of crabgrass and dog poop in my backyard. <laughs> not growing any soybeans there. I need to know one thing, coat, no coat. What's so freaking hard about that? Coat, no coat. We go, you know, Minnesotans, we lie. Five to seven minutes, that's as much time as we're out in the elements, you know? Five to seven minutes, that's it. And we go, house to car, car to work, work to house, house to car. Coat, no coat. <laughs> that is all we need. But no, we get a lot more, don't we? In fact, we're just coming into it now. Oh my God, we're coming out of winter, going into spring. Oh no, we're coming into storm season. They can't let you watch TV during storm season. They will interrupt whatever you're watching. Cliffhanger, end of the year, they don't care. Tornado alert, tornado alert, 800 miles away. <laughs> you don't know anybody who lives there. You don't give a damn about anybody who lives there. Like, turn that crap off. I want to watch Dancing with the Stars. I just want to know, are the people 800 miles away, are they getting that alert? Or was it all over for them at this point? We don't know what happened. We were watching American Idol. Next thing you know, we were tying ourselves to the toilet. <laughs> now, how do these storm alerts get started? Some jackass always spots a funnel cloud. I've never seen a funnel cloud in my life. Apparently, you have to have funnel vision to see them. It's always the same person who spots that funnel cloud, too. It's always some mobile homeowner from Shakopee. He's been breathing the formaldehyde from his crappy insulation. He's hallucinating at this point. It's a funnel cloud! I saw a funnel cloud! No, you didn't. That's Valley Fair, you jackass. <laughs> He's got the hotline to spend. That's the end of TV for the night. <laughs> My God, it's just simple. Just give it to me fast. All I need to know is coat, no coat. I mean, really, that's not too much to ask. Is it coat, no coat? In fact, at night, they shouldn't even have TV meteorologists. I don't think they should. They should just have a, a mannequin with a coat <laughs> or no coat on it. Very exciting time in America, even though we've got a lot of bad economic news going on. We do have a, a new president, which I think is an amazing thing, our first African-American president in the history of America. 
I just think it's, it's kind of weird and ironic, though, at a time when we have the first African-American elected president, a bunch of white people are handing him a mop and a broom and going, you better clean this crap up. <laughs> Well, no, it is. I mean, people ask me all the time, well, Jeff, you know, you made a lot of jokes about George Bush. You know, you're going to miss George Bush. I said, no, actually, I'm not going to miss George Bush. And I said, the reason is not as political as you think. It's comedy-wise. All right? I, with Bill Clinton, he was timely. He always gave us something good to work with in comedy. <laughs> but he did it in a timely fashion. George Bush actually beat us to the punchline. <laughs> and that's not a good thing. I mean, he said stuff that I couldn't make up. I mean, God, it was stunning. It was like, like, they misunderestimated me. When you're right 80% of the time, well, who cares about the other 3%? Turn the corner on inflation right now, turn that corner on recession. Turn the corner on unemployment. Turn the corner on the imbalance in trade. That's four corners, George. We're right back where we started. <laughs> what the heck are you trying to tell us? Uh, I don't know. Have a few laughs. That's what I say. It's a little time. It's, 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 it is an uncertain time we live in. And I think in that sense, you know, we should maybe take advantage of it a little bit. You know, do what I do. Pay your visa with your MasterCard. <laughs> This gives new meaning to the word revolving credit. <laughs> These last two bills, one under George Bush now, one under Barack Obama, we've apparently about $1.5 trillion worth of, we're gonna print monopoly money, give it to us all. Let us all have monopoly money. Let's all have funny money. I got it, you know the Canadian dollar's worth more than ours. Holy crap! <laughs> when was the last time that happened? Wendell Wilkie was president? I mean. Oh my God, the Canuck buck is worth more than ours. That's just plain out embarrassing there. I'm <laughs> but you know, I've traveled, I have all over. You know, I've, it's one good thing in comedy, 48 states I've been in and I've been 12 foreign countries. And it, it doesn't matter where I've gone, I find Channel 9 sucks everywhere. Huh? <laughs> because where we are, we're doing a comedy gallery TV show here, and I guess, you know, we're obviously based here in Minnesota, and politically, you can't figure Minnesotans out. All I can tell you is that we're politically, we feel very strongly both ways about everything. <laughs> we have splinters in the crotch from straddling the fence. <laughs> I mean, really, we can elect the right-wing firebrand senator like Rod Grams, we can elect the left-wing senator like Paul Wellstone, and then just to round things off, we put a wrestler in as governor. <laughs> I like that kind of left, right, all over the place. And eventually, when the next millennium comes around, they tell me we will have a comedian as our next uh, senator from Minnesota, which I, I, as the comedy lobby myself, I think that's kind of interesting. But Jesse was the best, because people all around the country, when I would travel, and, and when Jesse was governor, they would ask, you, you live in Minnesota? You, you live there now? You people are nuts. <laughs> what the heck are you doing up there? But I loved it. Democrats and Republicans were looking at each other and the next day. They couldn't believe it happened. You know, it's like they're looking like, well, he's not with us. <laughs> well, I know he's not with us either. Then they go in there with those Republican-Democrat fusion ideas to an independent Jesse, you know, as governor. That's great. It's like, you know, we need a stadium funded by tax dollars. We need, we need light rail, new sewage disposal plants. And there's Jesse looking at him like, hey, 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 how about these pythons right here? <laughs> Take a look at these Gatling guns. How about I wrap them around your head and crack it like a walnut? I think he's got a point. I'm going to get out of here. Jesse was popular, though. He was showing up in presidential polls. Uh, he that President Ventura, that would have been a wild one. Well, it might have even worked for America, but I just don't think it would have worked for international foreign policy very well. I couldn't see President Ventura you know, going to Red China and having that work out very well. President Ventura, here's the premier of Red China. Hey, China, what the heck is up with you people? <laughs> exactly how many of there are you? <laughs> 1.4 billion. Jeez, do you ever stop doing it? <laughs> but Jesse would have been good for one thing, though. Arms negotiations, you imagine that? Hey, how about these pythons right here? Check that out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I like that. 
<laughs> you have a little fun, though. But like I said, we're glad you came out to catch our, uh, our show here tonight. We appreciate that. Some of you did understand this was a comedy show, some of you. <laughs> some of you women are giving me those disappointed looks. I've been, on, I've been on stage 30 years, folks, and I know those looks. You're looking at me like, where are the Chippendale wiener men? And she's looking at you just... She's like, this is not what we were told. On KQ, they said they'll be dancing wiener man all night long. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe Scott told you that to get you here. I don't know, but it's not what's happening. Don't be fooled because she looks innocent now. Don't be fooled. Those are the ones. She looks innocent now. That's the one. They look like the nun from St. Ben's over here. Don't be fooled. Those are the ones who sit in the front row of those Chippendale shows with a $20 bill in their teeth going, come on, baby, bring it to mama one time. I work and produce. Let me squeeze the melons. Come on. All right. All right, it's Minnesota, so who am I kidding? It's not a $20 bill. <laughs> no, it's a coupon. <laughs> I know you folks a little better than you think. <laughs> Did you ever see those male dancers? You know, I'm talking about those Chippendale guys, you know? Teddy testosterone, Captain Workout. Yeah. Guys are so muscular, so tight, if they burp, their heads would fly off. <laughs> Nobody loves those guys as much as they do, you know? They can't walk past a mirror without going, oh, my God. Is that really me? I wish I could just make love to myself. But of course, you know, we know what they're really thinking is. <laughs> left foot, <laughs> right foot, <laughs> left foot. And all that equipment, boy, but nobody to operate it. <laughs> muscle guys, you know, and they wear those little string bikinis make them look like they're smuggling grapes. <laughs> I see, you brought fruit, how interesting, yes. They're always telling me I'm jealous. You're jealous of those muscle guys, Jeff. I say, ah, maybe it's true, but when they do that posing thing, I'm not real jealous of that. They get like 10 of them on stage, you know how posed down they all, oof, they all look like constipated turtles. Don't they? <laughs> I'm telling you, these muscle guys are like turtles. I saw one once, man. He flipped over in the parking lot. He couldn't get up. He's like, hey, 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 help me. I gave him a spin, you know. Oh, 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 oh. You got the muscle women, too, huh? Captain Happy, you with me on this one, huh? Like those muscle women, huh? Strong like bull, huh? They don't have breasts anymore, they have pecs. What are these muscle women? You know, what if they got pregnant? Can you imagine what that'd be like? A pregnant muscle woman delivering a baby? All right, we need you to push. Come on, help us out. Push, push. <laughs> I said push, not launch. Jeez, Bill, you want to get a tape measure over here? 70.6, a new world record. Let's see those East German women beat that mark, huh? East German women will never break that mark because East German women are actually men. <laughs> see, I'm damn glad they, they unified Germany. I really am, because to me, East Germany was clearly getting the uglier people in that arrangement. <laughs> I'm amazed when that Berlin Wall finally fell, the whole West and go, wait one minute. Is that what's on the other side? Well, apparently there was a very good reason for that wall. <laughs> hey, you folks have been a lot of fun. Thanks for coming out and seeing Comedy Gallery TV. I'm Jeff Trubino. Thank you.